back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes, yes. Scores out of the flex. Yes. The Denver Huskies win their first state championship. And good evening and welcome to Champlin Park High School for boys hoops tonight. The Rebels host the Maple Grove Crimson. Steve Thompson along with Pete Hayes tonight. Maple Grove having a good year. They're 15 and 6, 10 and 4 in the Northwest Suburban Conference. Champlin Park 5 and 13, 4 and 9 in conference play. Uh, they have dropped three in a row and have lost nine of ten. But Pete for the Rebels. They, they've played well at times. They just haven't been able to finish. Yeah, absolutely, Steve. They've been in a lot of ball games this year. They've only won one of their last ten, though, so they got to try to get this thing turned around. you got a couple more weeks before section play. You know, it's it's never too late. And Maple Grove, they just want to continue on doing what they're doing with a 15-6, and six, I believe, record. Maple Grove head coach Nick Schroeder has another good team this year and a lot of balance this Maple Grove squad, and they got a big guy in Lincoln, Paul Bickey, in the middle, uh, 10 a game, 8 rebounds a game, but uh, it is a solid team, but they've had their ups and downs as well. Yeah, they've only won a couple of their last six games, so they want to try to turn this thing around. Talking about their scoring, they do have four kids that are right in the uh, 10 to 14 range, so they have numerous kids who can do it, but looking at Champlin Park, too, they have four kids right around that 10, 12 point uh, per game too so it should be interesting tonight and for the Champlin Park Rebels tonight Tilke Peterson Cummings Graf and Hanson and we'll get the Maple Grove starters here in a moment up on your screen but uh, Maple Grove they've got uh, Stang Vadia and Paul Bickey among the starters averaging in double figures tonight and we'll just be about ready to go uh, and Pete, another factor, we're getting close to the end of the regular season. Uh, you, you can see the end from here. Yeah, it, it's close. You know, it's it's that time of year. We're coming to the end of, end of February almost. So you got girls hockey going on right now. State tournament's coming up. Wrestling's going on. And uh, boys basketball and boys hockey's not far behind. So Maple Grove, they'll be in white here on the road tonight and Champlin Park in their home, Navy with white numerals and pep band here tonight. Good crowd on hand for the ball game. We had an outstanding JV game and give those JVers some credit. Champlin Park gets a bucket at the horn. 44-42 win for the Rebels. Malik Cotton hit a layup to win it at the buzzer. Well, so, that, that's fun stuff right there. Yeah, no doubt. I'm looking at that Maple Grove huddle in that Paul Bickey. He, he's, a big, he's a big young man. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Lincoln Paul Bickey, 6'9", 235, senior post player. He'll jump it up against Tanner Hansen. Player goes down. Rebels have it. And we are underway here on a Friday night. Northwest Suburban Boys Basketball. Champlin Park. And, and they've won some high-scoring games. They've won... Some low scoring tilts. That one's kept in bounds by Champlin Park. Peterson not on the wing. It's Graf, Luke Graf. So it's not like in losing nine of ten, they've been blown out every night. No, absolutely. There's a good nice good feed look. down low and a miss there by Cummings. You know, I'm looking at the stats for both of these teams and scoring wise they're pretty even. Defensive wise, they're pretty even. Except one team has fifteen wins and the other has five. Stang missed the three, and the board comes down to Tilke. They get it down low quickly. Hansen against Paul Bickey. Nice move. Put it around him and in. Yeah, the two big guys going at it down low. Hansen scoring the first bucket for Champlin Park. And pretty good strategy. Try and get, uh, get Paul Bickey in a little foul trouble. Take it right at him early. This is Stang. Good player, 12.4 a game. Had eight in the win over the Rebels back on January 24th, so not that long ago. Stang hits a three. 
Uh, Champlin Park starting out in a 2-3 zone, but uh, if they shoot the ball like that, they're probably gonna have to come out of that. And now the Rebels go to work in the half court. Aaron Kleppner, head coach. Played for Champlin Park. Graf, turnaround in the paint. No, Board Tilke tried to give it up, got it back. Mason Tilke. A good job by Tilke to hang in there. Long three on the way, and that is short. Board to Tilke, and we got a foul. And I think this is going to go on Hanson. Well, Tilke's the smallest kid on the court, and he's got in there amongst the trees and is coming up with a couple of rebounds here for Champlin Park. It's not always how big you are, it's what kind of heart you have. And the foul goes on Hanson, number one, first team foul of the game on the Rebels. Maple Grove in the front court, baseline J. Bowman. From mid range. And the Crimson have scored five in a row. Out on the wing, Cummings on top, Tilke. Now it's Amore Peterson. Cummings again out on top. Nice defense by Maple Grove here. Yeah, doing a good job. Man to man right now. Shot partially blocked by Lala Berte. I think it's really important, Steve, for uh, Champlin Park to, to hang with them here early. When you've only won one of your last 10, you don't want to get behind early because they'll go, oh no, here we go again. So it's important for Champlin to score some early buckets here. We get it outside, here's Tilke. Neither team has gone to the bench. Nick Schroeder. Up, urging his team on. Driving in, Peterson. No, Halbicki the board. And he took advantage of his size. He just reached up and grabbed that one. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the big guy inside. Halbicki off the glass, gets his first points. He had 14 in the win over the Rebels in January. And Maple Grove on a 7-0 run. That was a little uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar hook there. Got to love that. And get it inside. Shot put up. Hanson hit the bottom of the rim. Rebound Paul Bakey. They're into the front court. Vadia. And now it's Stang. They swing it around the perimeter. Down low, Paul Bakey. Another bunny. Yeah, nice job moving the ball there by the Crimson, finding Pelvicki down low. And I think you do that until they stop it. Yeah, they've been inside there three or four times already looking for the big guy. And it's stolen away there by Lalaberte. On the break, Vadia is going to get it out on top. Staying three ball. He nailed it. He's got two made three, six points. The Crimson on a 12-0 run. Timeout on the floor, 13.30 to go. First half. Yeah, they're shooting the ball well to start out here, and uh, Champlin Park's had a couple of nice opportunities down low. Just hasn't been able to go to the bottom of the bucket, so 10-point lead here early for Maple Grove. And the Crimson have had their ups and downs. They were on a three-game skid. They got beat by their arch rival. At home by Osseo, lost to Andover at home, and then went on the road and got beat by Centennial in that low-scoring game you brought up before he went on the air, Pete. 37-36. I'll tell you what, Centennial took the air out of the ball there. Yep. Centennial hasn't had a real good year. You go and do something different, and <laughs> you beat Maple Grove. Tell you what, if I was Centennial, I'd be looking to do that come playoff time, that's for sure. Yeah, no doubt. If you're, if you're able to do it, why not? Shot clock is not a factor yet in gyms around the state of Minnesota. That'll be uh, the rule starting next year. And then they got a win over Blaine, then dropped one to White Bear Lake by two at home, and then they blew out Coon Rapids at home. So it's been a rough patch for Maple Grove, and you get the sense Nick Schroeder feels like this is an important night to 
get his team going because they play a very good Anoka team on Tuesday night. Uh, the Tornadoes are much improved. Yeah, they've been playing some pretty good basketball lately. I know you and me had their game last yep. week and looked pretty good against Andover. Boy, they, they took them right down to the wire. Here's Kamara. He took it to the rack, missed a shot. Stang on the break. Gives it up. Vadia kicks it out in the corner. And Bowman knocks it down. Third made three for the Crimson. They are rolling early. Yeah, he's a nice looking player. He likes that shot from out there too. He's hit a couple of them so far. Taken away, turnover on Champlin Park. Vady into the front court. Down toward the corner. It is Lala birthday. Now it's staying. No big player either, but he has a nice quick shot. Yeah, Lalibert, he's kind of the floor general out there for Crimson. I like the way that he moves the ball. Out on the wing. Another made three for Bowman. He has eight. 18 0 run for Maple Grove. Rebels scored the first bucket. It's been all Crimson since. Yeah, Bowman saying, I like this, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> In some ways similar to Maple Grove with the bleachers on the one end. Yeah, I haven't been in that high school in a oh, while. Oh, yeah. Great, great setup. Here's Cummings going along the baseline, turned away. Here's Kamara. Tried to go inside. Another turnover on Champlin Park. Raul Vadia is going to bring it in. He's going to go right into the paint all the way to the hole, put it up and in. He's on the board with two. Champlin Park, they need a bucket of any type. Yeah, they've had some easy looks inside. They just haven't dropped, so they just have to cool it down, keep their composure here, see if they can get back in this thing early. Graf, out of Kamara, drives in, travel. Another turnover on the Rebels. Well, I'll tell you what, Maple Grove is playing some tough defense, making it hard on Champlin Park. And like I talked about earlier, this is the worst thing that could happen to Champlin Park is to get down by this much early. Kuros into the game. Also on the floor. Hanson, Graf. Yeah, Preston Tilke out there. Mason Tilke took a seat. Maple Grove the ball. Big lead early. 10.47 to go on the half. Stang kicks it out, gets it back near a corner. That's long, no good. And the weak side board pulled in by McGuire. Paul Bicky. Hello. You always like seeing that in high school basketball. Yep. Paul Bicky watch. the slam, Stang the assist. 22 to 2, 20 0 run. And the Rebels turn it over, trying to get it to the cutter graph under the bucket. Now Amori Peterson back into the game, sitting down. Joe Cummings, and another timeout for Champlin Park. Maple Grove hitting on all cylinders. Yeah, Maple Grove brought some new players into the game here too, and, and they seem to be picking right up from where the starters were. Champlin Park having a hard time trying to work the ball underneath, haven't really shot from the outside, Steve, you know, try to loosen some things up. It's not working too well inside because there's a lot of big players underneath there for Maple Grove. Maple Grove has four made threes, two by Stang, two by Bowman. There's another look. Yeah, Stang to Paul Bickey. Yeah, he can get up there too, 6'9", putting that ball down with Eves for Maple Grove. Well, you know the old saying, you can't teach height. You cannot. <laughs> and he certainly has that big, strong guy in the middle, and they've certainly fed him. He has six points. Bowman, the leader, with eight. Vadia with two. Stang with six. Four of the five starters have scored for Maple Grove. Only points for Tyler Hansen. That came early. They get it to the post. Stang now on the wing. Drives in, tried to kick it out. Got a collision over there near the Rebels bench. And 
Careful on Baz. Uh, get a hand to it. Hanson did a nice job underneath there on that last one. Played some good defense. Driving in, Lalaberte put up the shot. Paul Binky the tap. That was pretty. And that isn't easy because you have to worry about the goal ten. No, he's done a couple of really nice things here early on in this game. Champlin has no answer for him. Rebels cut her down the lane. That's knocked away by Ambaza. The cutter down the lane for Champlin Park. Preston Tilke couldn't get a shot away. Yeah, that inner defense for uh, Maple Grove is tough, tough, tough. If you're keeping track, Crimson's on a 24-0 run. They have made life very difficult for the Rebels. Peterson to inbound. That was kicked away. Yeah, they're keeping fresh too. They're, they're rotating guys in and out all, all night long so far. Yeah, Nick Schroeder, he is, he is urging his team on because he knows Time to play well, they get it down low, and Hansen has an and one opportunity. First foul on Maple Grove. That'll break the string. Well, Pelbecki's out of the lineup right now, so Hansen took advantage of that going to the hoop, scoring two and getting fouled on the play. Foul is going to go on Baz, huh? Team fouls even. That one rattles home. So Tanner Hansen completes a three point play. And he'll take a break. And now it's Vadia running the point. He's going to drive down the lane all the way in. Miss it. Rebound tapped out of there, and it's grabbed by McGuire. McGuire gets it further inside. This is Femright. Now outside in Baza. Missed it. Rebound Maple Grove. Vadia again kicks it out. And that is a make for McGuire. Well, wow. Those threes are falling for Maple Grove. Right back the other way. Rebels kick it out. Long three there. No by Amore Peterson. And in transition, and Bossa catches in the corner. Swings it out. Vadia. Stang is on the bench for Maple Grove. Further out in the wing. Here's Ambasa, the catch. Uh, Vadia's going to reset. 8.23 to go. Here in the first half. Reverse layup try, no good by McGuire. Rebound hauled in by Graff. And now he'll outlet to Kuros. Javon Kuros in off the bench. And he threw that one away. Actually, it was tipped away. You know, Femright came in there, did a nice job taking the big man's place. And uh, he's 6'7 himself. He's only a junior, so that's a nice-looking player coming off the bench for Maple Grove. Eight to go in the half. Champlin Park the ball. Paul Bicke on the floor trying to go around him, and Kamara has a couple. Yeah. That's a good move. Yeah, nice move by Kamara there underneath the basket. And just spin around the big guy, which you don't want to do is hook, and he didn't hook which is an offensive foul every time. So that was good footwork there by Kamara. Out on top. And Basa over to the right. Shot put up, no good. That was Bowman missing the shot. Maple Grove's gone a little cold here. And now back out. Peterson three, no. Rebound fought for him. Basa, what a save. Gets it to McGuire. He'll give it up. Paul Bickey down the lane. Big guy runs the floor. He's got 10. Yeah, they do a little bit of everything, Maple Grove. They run the court. They do a night, and their sets are pretty nice. You know, they can shoot the three. Nice-looking team here in this first half. There's Tilke. Spins out. Rebound Paul Bickey. I don't think you want to get one of his elbows. No, I wouldn't think so. Preston Tilke was right there, and it's like, whoa. 
I believe a mark. Well, Bauman had to come out of the game here for uh, Maple Grove. Either he dislocated his thumb or uh, he might have just lost a nail on it too. If he dislocated it, I don't want to see it, Steve. I don't want to see the <laughs> nail either. I don't want any of that. Crimson in control. They were on that big 24-0 run to start the half. Driving in, nice driving bucket. Malaberte. Yeah, that was nice right there. Split two defense, went right to the hole, laid it in. Yeah, that was impressive. Ready and Alaberte, nice bucket. They get it down low. Kamara up over the top of Paul Bickey, couldn't get it. But, but that was still a good shot. Yeah, Paul Bickey, he swings those elbows down there. I'll tell you what. Like you said, I wouldn't want to get caught by one of those. So he gets that rebound, and he makes sure he's clearing people out. And then he sets an illegal screen. And team fouls are even at two apiece. I'm sure that doesn't feel too good running into the guy. Well, we've got about six minutes left here in this half, Steve. But Champlain Park's got to try to cut into this lead if they can. There's Preston Tilkey. Hands it off to Mason. And we got a foul off the ball. This could be staying. I think it is. Oh, Media is first. Got it wrong. Hanson back into the game for uh, Champlain Park. Rebels to inbound, get it down in the corner, further inside. Here's Hanson, kicks it out. Cummings, Peterson, he'll drive in, try a tough shot. Mason grabs the rebound. He'll go up, blocked by Paul Bickey. And then Vadia hustle play. Knocks it off Tanner Hansen. Crimson ball. Number 11 for Maple Grove. He's the kind of point guard that you want. A lot of hustle, good quickness, sees the court well. Nice looking basketball player. Raul Vadia, six foot, 165 pounds senior. He is running the point, averaging 10.3 a game. Had 10 against the Rebels in January over at Maple Grove. And they get it over to Lalaberte. Now it's Stang. Stang puts it on the floor, stops. They're in no hurry. Under five to go in the half. Further down. Now to get it to Paul Bickey, missed his shot. Double team comes, pushing, shoving. And I think we're going to get a foul on Paul Bickey. They had him sandwiched. And that's number two on him. Yeah, he was a little over aggressive down low there for Maple Grove. You know, Maple Grove, here's, here's another look at it right here. Yeah, he kind of grabbed on there at the end. He didn't know what to do with his arms. Yeah, he <laughs> fouled Tilkey. 14 foul on Maple Grove. Here comes Champlin Park. Mason Tilkey. Try to get it down low to Mason. Up and in. Or Hanson. Hanson has seven. Here come the Crimson. Tanner Hanson has seven points. Alberte, Vadia. Tried to work off a pick. Stang, wide open three. Missed it. And the rebound comes down to Tanner Hanson. Good job by him. Tanner lost it, got it back. Tried to hit the cutter. Tilkey uh, gets it outside. He'll try a three. No. Tilkey the board. Yeah, fouled by Vadia. There's Tilkey again underneath. Like I said earlier, not the biggest of players out there, but he's tough underneath that basket. You know, I'm looking at that Maple Grove lineup, and, and up and down it, uh, they're pretty young except for the three big guys. You know, you say, Jays, we got a young team, but 
the big guy and the shooter and the, the point guard are all the, the three seniors that are starting for Maple Grove, but the rest of the team's pretty much made up of juniors. Top of the key, Mason Tilke. And further out, it's Cummings. 3.30 to go in the half. Get it inside. Going up strong is Graf. He got fouled. Fouls starting to pile up on Maple Grove. That's number six. Yeah, the way that they started off, they're slowing down a little bit here, but they separated themselves with a 24-0 run. Yeah. One point it was 24 to two. Rebels broke that streak at 9:22 to make it 24 to four. And now Graf makes a free throw. He'll get one more. He's gonna get two either way. Yeah, they've actually outscored him since that time, eight to seven. If my Anoka math is right, but uh, you never know. Well, you and I went to the same <laughs> school, so don't look at me. <laughs> I, I, I believe you, Pete. <laughs> Stang threw it away, and it's stolen away. Tilky layup. Tilky to steal on the layup. Good job by Mays and 5 0 run by the Rebels. A little positivity under three to go on the half. Yeah, they got this cut down to 19 right now. It'd be nice if they could cut it to about 15 by half. To the outside, this is on Baza, knocks down a three. That's a big answer for him. That is a big answer. Champlin Park is starting to feel a little better about themselves. Rebels get it down low. Almost traveling as Graf stays with it. Up, no. And we got a foul on the rebound. I think that foul is going to go on the Rebels. Preston Tilke. Let's see. Yeah, I think he had a little push in the back there. That is number two on him. Number three on the Rebels. Just a sophomore for Champlin Park. His brother a senior. Driving in Stang and he got fouled. I think that foul is gonna go on Cummings. And it does. You know, Stang's another one of those three-tool guys who can shoot the three, not afraid to drive to the basket, and also passes the ball well for Maple Grove. Crimson lose a handle, and that, that, that's one that Gannon McGuire would like back. A little too quick. Two minutes to go. Half number one. That one's thrown away. Thrown away by Kuros. Now it's staying. Down in the corner. Massa. Working around the perimeter, trying to get a look. Once again, Paul Bicke on the bench with 10. Nice look down low. And an easy bucket for Lala Birthday. Yeah, with Paul Bickey on the bench, it's a little bit different looking uh, Maple Grove team. He does have a couple of fouls, so we won't see him the rest of this first half. But they, they kind of change their strategy a little bit with the big guy out of the game. Kuros down the lane, put it up, and in. Kind of leaned into it, got a bucket. Yeah, nice job by Kiros there driving down the lane for Champlin Park, getting two. Yeah, and he used the body well yeah, to he get sure a little did. room. 45 to go on the half. Stang. He's one of those guys, you, you give him a little, and there's another turnover. 
McGuire threw it away. I can't imagine Nick Schroeder's too happy about that. Yeah, a couple of turnovers here by McGuire in the last two minutes. Not real happy with himself, and I'm sure his coach isn't real happy with him either. Nice feed down low. Kiros the bucket. He has four in a row. Going to have to guess that Maple Grove's going to hold for one shot here with 15 seconds left. They're going to talk about it, see what they can set up. Yeah, they, they were just red hot early in that big 24-0 run, obviously. And then they cooled down, and Champlain Park's been able to hang in there. And I, I think for Nick Schroeder, the challenge is, is like, okay, guys, we got off to a great start, but we want to play well for an entire game because as we get to the end of the year, get to section time, you, you play well or you're done. Yeah, absolutely. You can't just play half the game and expect to win. You know, and for... For Champlin Park, you know, they missed a lot of really easy shots, Steve, early on. You know, this is a 20-point game right now. It could easily be a 10-point game. So Maple Grove's going to have to pick it back up here again, and Champlin's got to keep doing what they've been doing the last 10 minutes. Yeah, there's no doubt the Rebels had good looks. They just couldn't get anything to fall for a huge stretch of this first half. We're under 10. Here's Stang. Double team comes. Good job by the Rebels. Three to go. Are they going to get a shot away? No. Outstanding job by the Rebels at the end of the half. Yeah, good defense there by Champlin Parker. They're going to go down by 20 going into half. Maple Grove leads it 36-16. to 16. Leading scorer Lincoln Paul Bickey has 10 for Maple Grove. Champlin Park led by Tanner Hansen with seven. Stick around, half number two coming up here on QCTV. Welcome to our winter edition of At The Half, the show where we take a closer look at some of our area high school sports. I'm your host, Chuck Sten. Andover boys and girls hockey look to capitalize on their outstanding dual state championships last year in order to continue their success into this season. Let's talk with the head coaches from both teams to see what the teams have to bring. I'm Melissa Volk and this is my 10th year at Andover. Uh, our expectations are kind of similar every single year to be getting better you know as the season goes and be playing our best hockey come February you know we're a year older you know last year we were super young with so many freshmen on the team and, and now kids are kind of filling some different roles and, and kind of figuring it out this year. Our captains um, Ella Berger, Issa Gettel, Maddie Brown um, that top line of ours and then also Kaylin Mom back at D, Courtney Segman our, goal, our goalie but then a lot of other players that fill some huge roles for us and give us that depth that we need. Yeah, so every game, you know, we kind of get excited for and another opportunity to play with our teammates and whatnot. Uh, but tomorrow we play Minnetonka, so that's a big game. Um, and then uh, we're in the Dinah tournament at, after Christmas. Yeah, uh, we love our youth girls. We're so um, lucky to know all of them on such an individual basis. But, you know, the biggest thing that we preach here is just working hard and having a good attitude. My name is Mark Manny. I'm the head coach of the boys hockey team at Andover High School. Well, last year's team, uh, a lot of our skill up front was underclassmen, and when you have underclassmen leading your team uh, on offense, uh, they don't feel the pressure that seniors feel, so they tend to kind of play loose and, and, uh, and play very well. Seniors sometimes uh, you know, get the feeling it might be their last game if they lose, and, and sometimes that leads to not playing well. So um, we had the perfect combo last year of great senior leaders who were calm under pressure and juniors who played free. Uh, we'll see what we have this year. Uh, our best players are going to be seniors this year and and sometimes like I say that uh, that's not a great recipe and sometimes it is um, 
So we hope our young guys get better uh, every game and then we get good leadership and uh, I, I think this team will be pretty good by the end of the year. Well, up front, our, our three big guys are, are uh, Gavin Thorson, uh, Caden Casey, and uh, Cooper Conway. Um, uh, Kate, uh, Casey and Thorson both had over 70 points last year. Conway was uh, hurt about half the year, so he had uh, a few, his offensive numbers didn't look quite as impressive, but uh, they're gonna be our leaders up front. Uh, throw in uh, uh, senior Mac Yell, uh, and we're looking for big things offensively from him, and junior Ben Dahl as well. And after that, uh, we're going to see who steps forward and kind of takes the mantle and run, runs. Um, on the backside, uh, Tristan May Robinson, uh, senior captain, who's uh, been a stalwart for us for two years now and uh, will be again for a third and then Landon Stringfellow, a junior who played a regular shift last year and is getting better by the day. Um, back in uh, the net, we lost Austin Bronze, who was probably the best goalie in Minnesota last year. Um, so we're just looking for who's going to step forward and take that job. Got four very capable goalies, and any of them could be our starter by the end of the year. The Tornadoes have some new dedicated members of their cheerleading squad. Let's check in with them to learn some more. I started coaching this year. I used to coach at a different school for an elementary competitive team, so this is kind of a switch up, but I really like it. My name is Jordan Waldinger and I've been coaching here for four years. I'm going to be going on five. I came here to be the assistant coach just right after I graduated high school. So I've been here for, for a bit. Last year was kind of rough for us. We had a lot of drama, a lot of issues, but I feel like this year we have the most committed and hardworking team that I I've personally ever seen. have ever seen. Yeah. yeah, we are some, of, this is some of the most hardworking girls I've ever met. They are so committed, they want to win, they want to be here every day, they want to put in the work, and they want to get that bid. I think there's just more, more energy, more, more effort, so I just think uh, this team is just miles different than it was last year. They, just, they want to be here, I can tell they want to be here, they want to put in the work, they're putting in work outside of practice. Yeah, the, yeah. Drive, is, the drive is really mm -hmm. good, I enjoy it. We learned from our middle school coaches that were old Anoka cheerleaders that learned different ways and different techniques and stuff. And um, basically, when we got our new coach, Caitlin, she brought in some new um, cheers that she did with her old team. Also cheers that she had learned in high school herself. Yeah. So uh, yeah, cheers end up kind of just being a big collaboration of what ends up working for the team and like what we like the most. Our pyramids that we do in our competitive routine, we have performed them at football games just to kind of practice mm -hmm. it in front of a crowd. Yeah. And we've done it at we've done a couple of routines at Pet Fest. I think um, I think games that we cheer at, I feel that's more that's more performing and competitions I do view as like competing. Like it's more intense. Our first competition of the year usually is regionals and it's always the Saturday before Halloween. Um, and then after that we have competitions usually on Saturdays, every weekend or every other weekend kind of after that. Until like late February when um, nationals is. When I got hired, that was my goal to the AD, was yeah. I would like to take this team to nationals. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a huge goal for coaches as well. Yeah. So. Coaching this team, I, we've gotten you know two bids at the end and we just haven't gone yet. So I'm, I, I think that's, my, that's always my goal. Nationals. The Rebels gymnastics team is committed to setting goals and improving throughout the season. Let's see what the team is up to and how they plan to seek success this winter. We're, we're down a bit, um, but I've always said I want to work with athletes who will work hard. Like, if you love gymnastics and you work hard, that's who I want to work with. And, and we've got a, a core group of uh, great girls. We've got an awesome uh, senior leader in Melina Ong. Um, I don't know anybody that's worked harder. Uh, so it's been a pleasure to coach her, and she's already been an awesome, invaluable captain, and I know that will keep going through the season. We lost about half of our team, I'd say, 
And then we got a lot of new um, middle schoolers, which is really nice so that we have a really young team right now. And I think the season will be really fun. We have our summer practices, and then we also do, like, I tried to do monthly team bondings over the summer before season started. So the technique is the thing that takes a little bit more time and repetitions to um, build and well really all those things strength flexibility but the strength and flexibility are what we really focus on as a, as a coaching staff of those are things we can control if you're doing your splits daily and really working it you'll get more flexible if you're doing shoulder stretches and we do partner shoulder stretches and a lot of different stretches you'll you'll get more shoulder flexibility um, so the strength and flexibility we focus on a lot uh, we focus a lot on improvement so it's always a goal of ours with both our varsity and JV to have the team from that first meet to the end meet improve 8 to 10 points. Um, and last year I think we got almost to 12 with the varsity and pretty, I think maybe even 13 with the JV. So um, those continue to be our goals. So this year we're just focusing on rebuilding those good team habits and that mentality towards improvement. And, you know, we're going to try and beat those teams that are at that same level that we're at and uh, show that we worked to be our best on that day. That's it for this edition of At The Half. Make sure to keep up to date with all your local sports coverage by liking and subscribing to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube pages. Thanks for watching. Jason, let's go see you. And we are back, Rebels Gymnasium, Champlin Park. And the Rebels are down by 20 as we get ready to start half number two. Lincoln Paul Bickey led the way with 10, eight for Will Bowman. They got up to that big 24-0 run to grab that 24-2 lead and have really never looked back. And the Crimson will start with the ball staying. Vadia, Bauman, Lillaberte, and Paul Bickey out there for the Crimson. Yeah, really important, quite obviously, for Champlain Park to start off this half better than last half. Uh, they've cut into the lead down to 20 right now. Almost a steal there for Graf. And now Vadia, the three, no, the follow up and in by Bowman. He has 10, nice board. Yeah, Bowman can hit from that outside, has a couple of three pointers, and as you can see, he works pretty well inside too. Here's Champlin Park. Tilke Peterson, Cummings, Graf, Hansen, starting for Aaron Kleppner. Schneider is on the floor. Both. Nick Schroeder, longtime Maple Grove head coach. Ball on the deck, stolen out of there by Graf. He'll try the three. Rebound to Hansen, off no good. And then Paul Bickey cleans it up. Swings those elbows. Secures that board. Good movement by Maple Grove off the ball. The big lead is 22. 24 to 2. Champlin Park. Started to score a bit toward the end of the half. That one's knocked away. Good play by Hanson. Kind of came around Paul Bickey and Batted it out of bounds. And for Aaron Kleppner, goal is try and win the half. Obviously, you'd love to come back, but love to win the half. There's a nice feed, Lalaberte has six. Yeah, that's a that's a tough get to come back and, and win the ball game. But uh, like you said, Steve, I think it's important for him to, to win the half and, and finish strong. There's a shot, Cummings, long, no good, and the rebound. Called in by the Crimson. Here's Stang, Stang, gives it up. Nice look, Paul Bickey has 12. Big guy runs the floor well. Stang found him, and he caught it. Little bump, no foul, Cummings. That gives it up, here's Graf, no. And the rebound, Paul Bickey. 
Yeah, he, he uses that body too when he goes. He he fends people off and and goes to the hole very well. On top of the key, you're staying. Avedia, Raul Vedia, getting bumped there a little bit by Tilke. Gets it back. Staying out on the wing, turned away by Hansen. Alaberte on top. He'll drive into the paint. That one's almost stolen away. Good save by the Crimson. And then Paul Bicke, the bucket, and one. I'll tell you what, they've come up <laughs> fired up yeah. here in the second half. They might have got an earful after that second part of that first half. Here's another look at it. A couple of nice dishes by Maple Grove and the two. And the foul is going to go on Tilke. That is his first, first time the Rebels. And Paul Bicke will shoot the first free throw of the game for Maple Grove right now. That's kind of amazing when you have 44 points. Yeah, yeah and I, I looked at it. It's like, did I forget to write one down? No. Rebels just two or three in the first half. That one's stolen away. Here's Stang. Stang on the break all the way in. Blocked by Tilke. Tilke's going to outlet. Here's Peterson behind the back. And then the foul is going to be on Bowman, number one there. Yeah, nice job by Tilke right there. Get that rebound and start that fast break for Champlain Park. And we'll go to the bench. And coming in is Preston Tilke. And sitting down, Amori Peterson. 14.41 to go in the game. Crimson in control. Working around the perimeter. Mason Tilke off on the left. And there's a three ball for Kuros. Javon Kuros has seven. Yep. Side for the team lead with Hanson. Yeah, Kuros picking up a little bit of the scoring for Champlain Park from that point guard position. That was a good looking shot. Champlain Park pressuring the ball, and that's just a shove by Tanner Hanson. That will get called 100% of the time. <laughs> Absolutely. It was like he had his mind made yeah. up. He kind of got away from me. thought, well, I'm just going to let him have it here. Yeah, you, you are never getting away with no, that one. No. That, that, <laughs> that, is, that is a foul every time. Second on him. It's a 3 0 no from the corner. That was Bowman. Champlain Park in transition. Tilke in. No. Rejected by the Crimson. Alaberte gives it up to Stang. Stang across Paul Bicke, the catch, but going to try and get his way inside. No double dribble. Turnover on Maple Grove. Yeah, good call by the official there. He was trying to body up Hanson underneath there. Took that extra dribble. 13.30 to go in the game. Maple Grove led it, 36-16 at the half. We've got off to a quick start here. Kuros with a cutter. There's Cummings. Kuros right back inside. Here's Hansen. Hansen around Paul Bicke. Up, no. Paul Bicke the board. Well, he hung in there and got the rebound. Well, that looked like the first half right there. Easy little shot underneath and comes out, and here comes Maple Grove the other way. Media gives it up. Bowman, short. Rebound, Paul Bickey. Not down in the corner. That shot no good by Bowman. Vadia rebound. Well, they have been active on the offensive glass. Bowman on the outside. Drive there by Stang. Now Vadia again. Stang, fake, drive. Kicks it out. They're really moving it around. Yeah, and move now the travel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> moving a little too much. A little too much. couple of turnovers by Maple Grove that hasn't been 
too common so far tonight. Gannon McGuire in. Raul Vadia sits for Maple Grove. Get those Champlin Park subs in a moment. Tilke tries a 3 0 no rebound, Paul Bickey. Now it's staying again. And for a coach with a big lead right now, you still want your team to execute. So Nick Schroeder can't be thrilled. I mean, the the 24-0 run to start the game, but since, and then they got off to a good start here in this half, Pete. But, you know, he probably doesn't like to see a turnover like that. <laughs> you can see their frustration yeah. over there on that no side, doubt. walking up and down with his head looking up. It's like, come on, fellas. It's getting to be that time of the year. We have to, you know, you're winning 44-19. to 19 but you're not doing everything that he wants you to do. And there's Kuros, a three, no, and the board. Could have been an over the back on Paul Bakey. Good rebounding position there by Dom Mueller. Mueller getting some minutes here for Aaron Kleppner in Champlin Park. And he had really good rebounding pos position against the big guy. Kuros to inbound. Get it out in the corner. Graf put it up. Paul Bickey the board. Graf followed his shot, but wasn't going to get that rebound. Yeah, there's another easy miss by Champlin Park. Worked so hard to get those opportunities and then just can't put it away. Stank drives in the block and a foul on Tilkey. That is Preston Tilkey. You know, both those Tilkey boys they they get after it out there i'm yeah. sure that they get after it in their driveway <laughs> oh yeah you bet you always have a sibling and it, it helps you out i've always thought tilkey played some quarterback for the rebels this fall as a sophomore and the the thing is about champlin park football right now they, they, a couple of years in a row they have just had unbelievable injuries at quarterback there's staying back and down two free throws 46 19 11 to go here in this one graph curos under the bucket back to graph up block paul bickey and the board comes down to the crimson that was controlled by bowman now it's staying Dang to Paul Bickey, left of the lane, stolen away, Preston Tilkey. They're in transition. And Stang right back. Down in the corner. That was Lala birthday to miss. Now here comes Champlin Park, Komara. And then he threw it away. Yeah, getting a little bit sloppy out here right now, Steve. I both teams we're going to get a timeout and, and talk it over yeah and i would think that that's going to be a topic of conversation in both huddles well, i see that next week you have a good one with park center and andover looking for that conference championship here's another look at that throw away by champlin park which they can ill avoid to afford to do right now yeah, number one ranked defending Champ Park Center at Andover on Tuesday night here on QCTV. And you may remember last year's state tournament, Andover gave Park Center all they wanted in the quarterfinals. Yes, they did. And uh, Park Center right back on task this year. And, and Andover with a lot of those players back from last year. and Down by one game in the conference standing, so... Uh, it should be pretty exciting, and I believe it's at Andover, isn't it, Steve? It is at Andover. So that'll be Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Love to see you there if you can't make it. QCTV or QCTV.org. Look forward to bringing you that. Andover girls hockey already bound for the state tournament, the defending champs. Champlin Park traps the ball, and there's a foul. That's going to go on Preston Tilke. Doesn't like the call. And for Tilkey, that is number four. First player in the game with four, and he is going to set. He's an outstanding athlete, but 
A little too aggressive in spots here tonight. Yeah, I was gonna say, he's a good, nice looking athlete. They get it inside. Lalaberte gives it up. Trying to get it back and a travel. Josh Femright took a step. He's a big kid. Yeah, he really is, 6'7", junior. 220. There's a shot up and off. That was Kuros. Kuros had a pretty good look. Couldn't hit it. Stang the other way. Right on the wing. It is McGuire. 9.23 to go. And Baza. Now it's Stang again as they work the perimeter. Maple Grove led it 36-16 at the half. Baza, no. And the board ripped down by the Rebels. Mueller, they'll get it back. Kamara, nice move. Got the bucket. Malik Kamara. Yeah, Kamara. Picking up that scoring for Champlain Park almost has half of their points so far. I believe he has nine. Out in the corner, Matza. This is staying out on the wing. Big guy on the bench. Lincoln Paul Bickey has 14 points. Obviously leads all in this game. And a big force in the block. Staying down the lane, kicks it out. And that's a three ball for Lalaberte. He has nine. Yeah, he's quietly had a nice night for Maple Grove with nine. Maple Grove has three subs in the game, and they just don't miss a beat. And Lalaberte plays really solid defense. He's very active. Driving in, Kuros put up a shot. No, and the rebound, Femrite. 6'7", junior, figures to get a lot of minutes next year. Playing behind Paul Bickey this year. Bad son, now it's staying. And Nick Schroeder's going to take a timeout. Boy, Henry Stang, he, he has got a motor that's running all the time. He is all over the floor and is going to get a breather right now. But Yeah, and he'll either play that point or, or he'll play that two for Maple Grove. He does both of them very well. Yeah, he is dynamic, plays with great injury. Femrite down low, up no, but a foul. That foul is going to go on Kamara. His first and the fifth on Champlin Park. Maple Grove got in a little foul trouble in the first half. They only have one foul here in the second. I'm guessing this Femrite was a football player. You, you did a little bit of Maple yeah, Grove football. I, 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 don't, I don't remember the name, but... I, I think 6'7", 220 is yeah. an ideal tight end. I, I saw them at YZ during the regular season. Well, their, their tight end is going to the Gophers, and I believe his name is Peters. There's a shot up, no good. If I got that wrong, I probably have Maple Grove people yelling at me now. But well, they had a good football team. They sure did. Coach Lombardi, state championship for the Crimson. And there's a driving bucket by McGuire, he has five. Gannon McGuire had a couple of turnovers in the first half. That there's a driving bucket that'll take the sting out of that. Driving in, Kamara. He got held by Femrite. Tell you what, when Kamara gets that thing underneath, it usually isn't coming back out. He he's trying to make some kind of move, you know. But right now he's up against some really big guys underneath there. 
Speaking of big guys. Yeah, Paul Bickey's on the floor again. Quick three from the corner. Shot no good by Cummings. Board to Champlin Park. Grabbing it was Mason Tilke. Long three by Peterson. Short board down low to Hansen. And it's stolen away by Maple Grove. Under six to go in the game. Crimson in command here tonight. We got a foul out in front. That could be Peterson. That was a nice double there by Champlin Park, too. I thought he threw it away, but must have got him on the hand. First on Peterson, and the six on Champlin Park. Ambaz gets it in. His baby was on the bench, trying to get it to Paul Bakey, stolen away by Tilke. Tilke gives it up on the wing. Here's Cummings, now down into the corner. Three ball. Peterson hits. First points of the night there. Yeah, he's been looking for one of those all night long. He's been hunting a three, and Finally got himself one, so good for him. He has certainly had some looks. Rebels from the field. Been a tough night. Paul Bakey down low, gets a bucket and one. That'll be the third on Tanner Hansen. Paul Bakey, six and a half, 16 in the game. So I'm not sure, Steve, maybe you can help me here. What section is Maple Grove in for basketball? I thought it was seven in 4A. Okay. Or is that Andover? I think that's maybe, Andover. Maybe, Andover's maybe, in seven. and Anoka's maybe it's in eight, seven. Maybe Maple Grove's in eight then. Because Maple Grove and Andover will not meet in the section. Yep. So. Well, they they move everybody around in all different sports. You know, Nobody's yeah, in the same, I, same I would, section. I don't think anybody wants to play Maple Grove in that section. I think they might be in eight and Andover's in seven. And Mazza, three, got it. He has six. Quickly the other way, Champlin Park, three ball, off, no good. Tyler Puss. 5'10", ninth grader, hitting some minutes. Yeah, we might see a few different players here. It looks like Maple Grove is going to put a few different players into the ball game. Paul Bickey down the lane, drops the hammer. Eight and a half, 18 in the game. Yeah, it's a little bit above his average, but a uh, lot of rebounds, a couple of slammers. <laughs> Got to like the big guy. And, you know, he does run the floor well in transition. He is there. Down the lane, putting up the shot. J.J. Gatte. He's got a couple. Four minutes to go in the game. April Grove going to bring some guys from the bench in shortly. Be the end of the line for Vadia, Paul Bickey. Yeah, those guys over there are just waiting for a whistle right now. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. let's go, guys. Yeah. I, I want to get some minutes. Yeah, their time's running. Paul Bickey, the board, powers it up and in. That's Ten in each half. Such a nice job when he gets underneath there, Steve. Yeah, Protecting good. that basketball. Good footwork. Couldn't get there to block. Poos with his second bucket. 61-28, timeout on the floor. 3-12 to go. Here's Poos. He went right after yeah. the big guy. He got a hand it to him. Kind of gave him a little look there. Like, take that. Well, and it could have been an and one. Actually... We're going to keep it going. Get everybody into the game. Yeah, a bunch of new players in there for uh, and or for uh, Maple Grove. One of them being Michael, Michael Wagner. He's 6'6", 230, so they have some big guys. That's for sure. And here come the Crimson. They're up 36-16 at the half. This one decided pretty early. Maple Grove opened the game on a 24-0 run. 
First bucket to Champlin Park and Maple Grove 24 in a row. Into the lane, Dreheim, shot is good. Bo Dreheim. Dreheim a sophomore for Maple Grove. 6-2. And the thing is, being able to get out there, get some minutes. Get your name on that varsity score sheet. Certainly a confidence builder. Yeah, a bunch of sophomores out there for for Maple Grove. I'm sure they played in that last game. That yeah, Malik Cotton's on the floor. He scored the game winner. Three-pointer there by Gate. No good. Yeah, Malik Cotton hit, hit the layup as time expired to win the JV game for Champlin Park. That was a neat moment. Good finish to that game. Well, they have five new guys getting up there now for Maple Grove. He's going to clear the bench. There's Cotton. Gives it up on the wing. They work it out. Post over the backboard. Crimson ball. Clock on the move. Subs coming in. So for Champlin Park, it'll be 10 of their last 11. And no easy task. They have a matinee at St. Michael Albertville tomorrow afternoon. Maple Grove hosts Anoka on Tuesday night. We've seen the tornadoes, Pete. Much improved Anoka tornadoes. They really battle. Yeah, they got a couple of young guns on that team, too, that are playing extremely well right now. Tobias Powell had the board a moment ago. Elijah Campbell lets one fly. No. Three-pointer off. No good by Gavis Moore. And now we have a foul. Yeah, I think that one's on Burgess. Rebels have it. Final seconds of the game. Another three on the way. No. Tapped around, grabbed by the Crimson. And Nick Schroeder says, hold it. I'm just going to dribble this one out and call it a night. There it is. April Grove rolls tonight. The final 63-28. to Big guy Lincoln, Paul Bickey. Had 10 in each half, 20 points. Probably dub, double digits in rebounds as well, Pete. Yeah, he's he's a force to be reckoned with, and Maple Grove is kind of uh, making a statement right now, and that's what you got to do with a couple weeks left. Move up to 16 and 6, I believe. So uh, Maple Grove looked good tonight. I wouldn't want to play him come playoff time, that's for sure. Crimson R, 16 and 6, 11 and 4 in league play. Champlin Park falls to 5 and 14, 4 and 10 in league play. Once again, Rebels back at it tomorrow afternoon at St. Michael Albertville at 2.30. And Maple Grove returns home. They host Anoka on Tuesday night. Big thanks to our crew here at Champlin Park and back in the studios for his play-by-play partner, Pete Hayes. I'm Steve Thompson. Good night. <laughs>